very happy to have him. Without reading his long bio, I will introduce you, ladies and gentlemen, Rob Jollis. Thank you. All right, let's do a, a quick video swap here. And let me just start by saying this. I can't believe I'm speaking in town. Uh, I'm, I'm about 28 years at this, and I get to speak in my own city maybe once every 10 years. And uh, it's almost, uh, I never do an, an open session. So uh, I have to tell you, I'm thrilled to death to see more than one company in front of me and be able to get out, drive in my car, and show up at a seminar. So I'm pumped. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, very excited. Uh, and I have to tell you that um, uh, you don't even have to worry about your note taking today. I've taken the notes for you. I, I truly, I, I, I um, for years have watched people and been a little frustrated when we give talks like this. That it, I think it's from our schooling days where we're, we're taught, I'm not going to tell you what's important, you figure it out. And, um, you know, and then we'll test you and see how much of my mind that you read. So uh, I'm, I, I'm, a Rob, I'm, I'm a Mager fan who says, teach the test. If there's something important here, why wouldn't I put that down there for you so you can keep your head up? and see if this makes sense, the conversation we're about to have. So I'm going, I've, I've done more than giving you a picture of the slides. I put text below every slide of what I really wanted you to get from the slide, meaning we can just keep our head up and have a nice conversation this morning. So notes are there for you. We're, we're good to go. Uh, the art of urgency. Yeah, Fred, I didn't know where you were going with that, but um, I know where I'm going with that. Uh, <laughs> All speakers are a little nervous. Is he going to rip the heart right out of this thing uh, or what? Uh, let's do this. I, I think kind of an interesting way of starting a presentation is this way. I'm going to tell you a little bit about uh, me in a moment. But every month, I think you're walking in here, and we're talking about sales training and sales innovation, and every sales guy's got a new idea, and I know your motto. You're, you're going to go easy on me. You're, you, I, I'm going to tell you, most of you came thinking, if I can get one, or two good ideas from this guy. I've had a good morning. Okay, bad thinking. If you walk out of here without two or three good processes that are repeatable, predictable, and able to implement back at your office, you've had a good morning. Let's get out of this I need an idea or two thing. So let's start with this idea of what it is we're even talking about when we get up here and talk about sales. So let's define it, okay? I'm curious how you define what we're calling selling in here. Now, I've got it up on the screen because I'm a left-handed guy, meaning my handwriting isn't all that great. So I'm going to count your numbers a little bit here, but I want you to watch it over there. So I'm giving you four definitions. Here they are. Maybe you think selling is doing what you say you're going to do, making a commitment with the client, sticking with that commitment. Maybe you think selling is the art or the act of listening to the client, taking the needs of the client, and then providing solutions to those needs. Maybe it's, it's, it's your ability to persuade existing clients to fix existing problems or concerns. Or maybe it's that last one, linking the specific needs of the client or customer to the benefits of your idea or your solution. OK, let's see how you stand. You can only vote once. Uh, no write-ins. Don't get crazy. You don't want to mess with speakers. We, we, we're ready for you. OK, so how many of you, with your one and only vote, would say, that selling really is doing what you say you're going to do. Come on. Here you go. Back in the corner there. Two, three. Proud of you. Thinking about it. See if they were an auction, you'd be buying. OK. OK. Um, how about listening to the client, taking the needs of that client, and then providing some solutions to those needs? OK. Now, this is only a pro can do this, but that's 24. OK. <laughs> we'll try that at home. How about persuading clients to fix existing problems or concerns? And we got another six. And uh, how about linking the specific needs of the client to the benefits of your idea? Yeah, you're not going to really make me good. OK. And uh, got it. OK. Rough, 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 rough. OK. How many of you have ever been sales trained before? I'm not even looking because that should be the most annoying question you're asked. How about this, particularly if you're managing salespeople? Ask them how many times they've been sales trained if they've been sales trained more than a dozen times in their career, 15 times in their career. We do a whole lot of sales training, it seems like. But the funny thing is, I guess the real question is, how many times have you been taught how people actually buy? Do you believe that clients go through repeatable, predictable steps 
when they make a decision. I do too. I'm basing my career on it. And if you don't believe it, I'm going to prove it to you this morning. Because as far as I'm concerned, the first move we should make as salespeople forever is, before I open my mouth, I have to figure out where my client is. You know, I, I, I came out uh, at the University of Maryland, and within two weeks, I was selling for the New York Life Insurance Company. I sold life, health, and disability. Any former or current uh, life insurance people in here? Don't be ashamed. <laughs> Hello. How are you? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Nothing like selling a little death, huh? All right. It happens. Somebody's got to do it. I'm with you. Uh, fact is, I, I, you know, that's where I was. That was my lot in life. I was given two, I was given three and a half days of training, but really memorized and digested two scripts. I could do one of them at a party. One was called the Live, Die, Quit story. Love that one. Had a very emotional ending. You see, people don't plan to fail. They, they fail to plan. It was, it was wonderful. But you've got to bring them to that climax. <laughs> and then the second one was the Live, Die, Quit story. Oh, that was a beautiful one. This plan's going to take care of you. You live, die, or quit somewhere along the way. It was wonderful. And it was, it was about eight pages. It was a rite of passage. And we learned it. <clears throat> Thankfully, I think we're kind of off the scripts now. We've moved past that. We're back into processes, which is good. But the reason why I'm talking about looking at it from the inside is I don't care what process we have. Before I make a move, I've got to know where I am in my process and not, well, we start at step one, and then we just mechanically go through the steps. So now that I've asked you about your definition of selling, let me shake it up a little bit. Talk to me about how you buy. Think like a buyer. Think like a client for a minute. So with regards to, let's say, with regards to your your home, okay? Here's your, your scale. I want to know this. Is it absolutely perfect? You live in the perfect home? Be careful. I'm, I'm, I'm born and raised around here. I know, and seeing as nobody seems to have traveled more than about 11 miles today, I know where you live. But it, perfect. I mean, a perfect commute, perfect neighbors. No one's pulling an engine out in front of your house or any nonsense like that. You're up there. The kids are over there. Perfect. The second one says, okay, not perfect, but good enough. Who's got the perfect home anyhow? Maybe three, four, five years from now, you'll significantly remodel or maybe move, but not going anywhere right now. Third one says, huh, fed up. You hadn't bellied up to the bar for this meeting today. You'd probably be on the phone with a realtor. <laughs> Something's happened the last 24, 48 hours. It's got you on the move. And the fourth one says, I'm looking. I don't want any whiners here. I want a for sale sign in the front yard. I want multiple listings kicking around the coffee table. I want you out every other weekend looking at homes. You are in the market. Let's see where you stand. How many people say, and don't be ashamed, be proud, would say, I've got the perfect home. There we go. That's it. So the video guy sort of gave me a, a wave there. All right. <laughs> you're, you're excluded. All right. I'm going to get this one last. Anybody in the fed up category? Just curious. Isn't that interesting? Well, we, um, sometimes if we had 100 people here, we'd get about a half a person. It seems like we do build a lot of processes for that. What a shame. Uh, I'll show you where the numbers shake out a little bit later. But uh, OK, here we go. Who, right now, looking for a home? Come on. Not a realtor. I won't hurt you. Uh -huh. <laughs> Pile on. There he is. OK, there's our prospect. <laughs> That's him. That's the one. Of course, uh, we're going to magically just call you. Let's, let's say 45 in here, OK? So uh, we'll give you uh, 41 over here. And, uh, and the funny thing is, we do seem to be building a lot of sales processes here. I mean, we know how to sell this guy. Matter of fact, forget a day or two, which is what I'll spend when I'm putting on a workshop for a client frequently. We don't even need to spend five minutes, actually, learning to sell that guy. Maybe five. I want to get my benefits lined up with my features. I, I'm okay there. But these three, not eh, so sure I'm as interested. I, I'm not leaving them alone. But statistically, that, the pot's about right. It's about 4.5%. That one, right there. <laughs> That's the one. That's the one. It's not perfect, but it's the good enough. If we can, by 10.15, I looked at the board. I'm not going to 10.20. It's not in my contract. 10.15, OK? Uh, if by 10.15, we can build a process that makes sense, that you can take out with some notes behind it, that you can implement back at your office, then I'll put this presentation up against anybody's presentation, because I'm a competitive guy. 
then we'll, then we'll be cooking with gas in here. I, we, now we've got to make good on that bet. That's where I want to be. These people right here. I want to talk about the ones that, you, that, that say to you, yeah, we're thinking about it. Well, let me throw another feature and benefit on the fire. Uh, still thinking about it. <clears throat> well, okay, I'll come back for my annual you're thinking about it visit uh, sometime next March. Uh, that's the one I want. And, and, and statistically, I'm going to show you that it's not quite that overweighted. It's only about 79% of the population. I'm 12 years polling these numbers, 50,000 in our polling right now. It's huge. That's where we want to live. And what I want you to look at is what you told me when I came out of the gate. You may want to revisit your definitions because I believe that we do a wonderful job of teaching people how to order take. We define selling frequently as taking needs and providing those solutions. Good. We got to take that guy's needs and provide some solutions because he's got needs. What about the other 41 who didn't put up your hand? Tell me what you need. I don't need a thing. Hmm. Maybe, our, maybe we're a little disjointed here. We're going to make those two line up in a minute or two. Look, I think that you want to do what you say you're going to do. My goodness, we had three people who just couldn't keep their hand down. Good. I don't know if it defines selling, but it defines integrity. I'm, I'm, I'd love to have you on my team. I think most of you stayed away from it because you said, that's a good thing to do. I just don't know if it defines selling. Good. Smart. Well, what about this one? Am I going to tell you not to listen? Of course, you know listening is going to come out of the barrel at some point in this morning. Of course, I'm going to tell you to listen. I asked you to define selling for me. Listening, taking client needs, wonderful for that guy. For linking the specific needs of the client, wonderful for that guy. It's, I put more sales words in here. I thought it might be nice for you. Uh, but it's the same definition. I don't know. I want to grab a beer with these six. I want to figure out how to persuade people to fix existing problems. That's when you whistle and a salesperson comes down the pole. Matter of fact, I will ask you to take one note, okay? Uh, one thing that, I'm, that I, then you can cross it out when I'm not looking, because sometimes I think, this is important. People go, eh, this isn't that good. But, but I'm going to define in one sentence what I want to do by 10.15 this morning, and I want to build a process for it. I believe, I'm going to repeat it a couple of times. I, and, and I'm going to tell you this because I think, I, I'm old fashioned. I was at Xerox down at the training center for eight years, I uh, trained all the trainers for Xerox. I believe whether we speak for an hour, a day, or a week, you have a right to understand in one sentence what the big picture is. What's this guy talking about? One sentence. I believe selling is the art of taking an idea, planting it in your client's brain, and making them feel like they thought of it. Again, take an idea, put it in your client's brain, and make them feel like they thought of it. Now, we'll get to the... We'll get. We'll have, I'll be happy to have a conversation about manipulation, <laughs> manipulation, influence, ethics. We'll be all over that. So if that, if, if you're twitching a little, hang tight. We'll fix that up for you. But I'm talking about persuasion. I'm talking about selling, and I'm talking about getting off the order-taking merry-go-round that we're on. Tell me what you need. I've got my pad. I'm a great listener. I bet you are. Unfortunately, I need a salesperson right now. <laughs> And, and let's talk about it now. I'm, I'm, I'm on a roll. I had a cup of coffee late. I'm, I, it's, it'll come through my system just about five more minutes. But I want to get to the ethics of this because sometimes people don't understand. They don't understand that we need salespeople. I know you're going to make a change. But I know you don't fix small problems. You fix big problems. So I got two choices. I can shut up and walk out of here after dumping some features on you, or I can get into a deeper conversation about the problem. Those are my choices. You find me manipulative? I don't. I find myself compassionate. I find myself ethical because I'm going to get you to articulate what's very difficult for you to talk about. I'm going to have to earn the right. And that's what I want to do by 10.15 today. I want to talk about how to do that. But I'm not ashamed at all. I'm not ashamed at all to understand that sometimes we have to dig deeper. And we'll get there. The Java's career, it's not all that exciting. Out of Maryland, in the New York life, uh, my first sales book, I wanted to call it One More Than a Dead Man. And, uh, Simon and Schuster didn't like that title, but I, I wanted it because it was such a momentous thing for me. Anybody ever see the movie Glen Gary, Glen Ross? <laughs> Put that coffee down. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, don't get me started. But all I can tell you is our Monday mornings at the Watergate building looked a whole lot like the Alec Baldwin scene. 
Okay, we, we magically had the, our sales process was two a week, 10 a month, and don't let us catch you in the bullpen. So out we went with our briefcases, trying to sell life, health, and disability. Anyway, we'd come in on those Monday morning meetings, and there was all our list. I was one of 24 AFUs, apprentice field underwriters. And, and we, were never, we, we, we couldn't, we bid how many apps we were going to sell. And we could never bid less than two. So if you showed up with nothing, you just bought a cheap term policy on you or a loved one that week. But, but if you showed up with one, that manager always a little hard of hearing, like, girls, couldn't hear it. <coughs> one, sir, you know, dog, God, sorry, louder, where, stand up, what? One, well, one. Well, that's one more than a dead man, isn't it? Oh, I'm so motivated to attack the world, sir. Thank you. Thank you for that pumping up. Uh, but, okay, I, I, you know, there I was. I actually did come out of the gate pretty hard. I was a senator of the month the first couple months. I was, I, you know, led the pack. I, coincidentally, I have 36 first cousins living in the state of Maryland, but that's irrelevant. The, the, the fact is I, I was hot for a while. Then I cooled off, go figure. And then I got hot. I got lucky. I'd love to tell you because I'm such a great salesperson, but I bought a, just a weird day with an attitude. I took close to $4 million, this is 1980, on... Uh, two 80-year-olds, whole life insurance. And back then, that would shoot you across the pro rata board in a hurry. Um, my, my first year ended up number 11 out of 7,800 agents. They put me on little magazine covers. They nicknamed me the Rocket. <laughs> See you at the top, that kind of thing. I, you know, I would go around and talk at million dollar round table meetings with knees wobbling. If you can conceive and believe, you can achieve. You know, I'm I, I just, just grabbing stuff that I could find. I, I had no idea. You must find older people with tax issues. I, I don't know. I, I, I was lucky. But the funny thing was they gave me a corner office at the Watergate building. They gave me uh, my own secretary. Uh, I didn't have to go to Monday morning meetings anymore. I walked a little straighter. And the, the, the brain is a funny thing. I thought I was very good. And my second year, I realized I had two choices. I could burn out or I could become unethical. Being the competitor that I am, I chose both options. And actually, <laughs> actually made the chairman's council my second year top 2.5% of the company without this very fortunate sale. And a few months later, I was, I was hanging it up. New York Life said to me, um, how would you like to be a trainer? And they sent me to New York, and I began to look at it from the inside. Uh, and I tried because I think one of the problems we have is not necessarily looking at you and telling you what you're doing wrong. Nobody told me what I was doing right. And I don't care who you are. Zig Ziglar, you pick your hero. Brian Tracy, one of my heroes. The fact of the matter is, if you don't know what you're doing right, what do you fix when things aren't going right? And I don't care who you are. <laughs> this is a career of peaks and valleys. That's why we lose so many great salespeople. Because when they get cold, they don't know what to fix. And management, which they did to me, was once I got hot, you just keep doing what you're doing. You don't even have to tell us what you're doing. You know? And no more meetings for you. Uh, walk in with that big head of mine. That's right, no meetings. Uh, that was who I was. So I'm a casualty of that. New York Life taught me to love selling. Xerox taught me how to sell. Both of them very critical for, for me as a, as a salesperson. When I went to, to Xerox and they threw me back out there selling copiers, I'd never seen anything like it. There I was learning processes, uh, you know, not scripts, truly appreciating what the sale was. Uh, it, it was an amazing experience for me. In any case, you're going to get a little bit of both sides. I, I would love to, you know, I'm very proud of the books that I write. Uh, custom, you know, <laughs> So what? Customer center selling was you know, number one for 20 weeks. I find that irrelevant, sir. And I would like you to stop bringing it up. Okay, 100 weeks in the top 20? Yes, but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about selling in here. And arrogance, no. I, 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 who cares about books? If a person comes up here to talk about selling, I'd like to hear what they sold. And that's why I'm ready to leave this conversation now, but that's why I wanted to go there with you. Now, let's get back over here. You've just seen the disconnect. You've also heard my vision of sort of what selling is. And the funny thing is, is that for years I'd walk around and go, that's what selling is. And somebody said, you know, you should see the movie My Big Fat Greek Wedding. Because your definition is hanging in that movie. And so, uh, in fact, I did take a look at it. And uh, in that movie, you'll hear sort of what I'm talking about. So watch this clip and see if you understand, if you get the connection. <laughs> 